Get ready for a colorful autumn lover's theme because it's time for our September plan with me. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Shada and today it's time for our September plan with me. <laughs> so I am so excited for this one. There's some plan with me's that are just special. Obviously the January setup every year is a big deal. And then September with all those back to school vibes, I don't know, it just makes me want to journal even more than usual. So I have a really fun setup. It's autumn themed. If you love autumn like your girl Shada, then you're really going to love this setup. It's colorful. There's tea, there's leaves, there's some pears in there. Um, we'll do a calendar, a Dutch door cover and lots more. And make sure you watch until the end of today's video because I have a giveaway for you. It's most everything you need to start journaling. Yeah! <laughs> Okay, let's get started. September is a new journal month for me. My other one was totally full, so I have a new Archer and Olive hardcover dot grid notebook. I can't recommend these journals enough. It's the best when you can like support a really cool person and small business and get the best possible quality product. These are high quality, heavy, white, crisp pages, and that is what is most important to me. So new journal looks a lot like my old journal. I've got that moon theme and I've kind of carried this magic moon floral theme all through my journal. So I love that um, the cover kind of goes with that. Anyway, we're going to jump right in and we're going to begin with our Dutch door cover page for the month of September. I have this idea for a teapot illustration. So if you want to draw along with me, start by drawing a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll show you how I begin to sketch out a teapot by placing a little kind of lid on top of my circle. Then we give it uh, the spout and just work out some curving lines there. Same thing with the handle, some little curving lines on the right hand side and you can see the teapot kind of emerges. And I just sketch and sketch until I like the way it looks. Then I kind of erase everything because it's just so messy and heavy on the pencil and then I lightly sketch it back in. So start with the circle, put the little lid on there, the spout and the handle. Make sure it's not too big either. Um, sometimes drawings can get sort of large and in charge without you noticing. So keep it petite at the center of the page because we're going to add florals. But first we'll add color to the teapot itself. And you can see I've got a couple different blues and grays here. And the blues are going to be for my florals. So yes, it's gonna be like a nice blue and white porcelain teapot. So I'm starting with kind of these Nordic inspired flowers and um, they're made up of a big burst of petals on top with the stems and pairs of leaves down below. Very Nordic, Scandi inspired. And then we'll make this teapot look really hand painted by placing little details like a row of hearts. You could do stripes, you could do rows of dots, you know, anything you can think of goes. And don't worry about getting it perfect either because it should look hand painted. So hand drawn is kind of perfect for that, right? And then once you've done a few larger design um, elements, whether it's the Nordic flowers or hearts or borders, whatever, just fill in with lots of little um, leaves and flowers. And I think the teapot comes together actually pretty easily. Then you can go ahead and grab some gray. I'm starting with the really, really light gray from Faber-Castell and I am going to fill in the entirety of the empty space. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't do the gray first, it's because I personally just don't like the look of um, placing marker on top of marker. So I don't like how the blue would have looked on top of the gray. It just looks sort of heavy um, and you can get a little bit of bleeding and, as well. So. That's my preference. Once you are done coloring everything, if you like to add a sketchy black line, like you know I do, um, we can do that. It's it certainly doesn't need it. I don't think this illustration needs the outline, but I love it. And I am using uh, my Mulatto black liners, and this is the 03 nib, I believe. So it's weighty, but it's not too heavy. We'll place our month title down below. I'm just using a really simple lowercase print. Well, a bit of uppercase in there as well. <laughs> And then we will add some colorful florals and let's talk about the color palette. 
because my illustration has a lot of blue and because this is an autumn themed cover page, I want to add in some peach and some burgundies. So the peaches and yellows and reds, not only are those gonna complement and contrast beautifully with the blue, but they're gonna bring in all my autumny warm colors. I'm gonna add warm dark greens as well because of course I'm doing leaves and that's where we'll start. Probably put some purple in there too. I am going to sketch out some little leaves and berries, although you could just get started with the markers if you're confident. You can see here I did some berries. I'm doing these little oak leaves, um, doing some simple lavender. I just place a stem for the lavender and then do these little heart shapes at intervals along that stem. We'll do tiny flowers. You know, you get the idea. Make some leaves smaller, some leaves larger and then we will color everything in. My one tip for you is don't take the leaves, berries and flowers right up to the teapot. So leave a little bit of space between the teapot and your florals, um, just so that the illustration doesn't look muddled. When you look at it, you can see the teapot and the florals very clearly because there really is a lot going on here, especially since the teapot is patterned. So just a tip, um, work out your color palette ahead of time as I have done that will always set you up for success. And one other tip that I will give you is if you are doing quite a colorful um, illustration like this one is, a way to make it more palatable if you're like me and you're a little color shy is to make sure the colors are muted. So instead of bright red, a burgundy. Instead of you know lemon yellow, go with that mustard. Instead of shamrock green, we're going to use like a pea green. So there it is, my September Dutch door cover page, all cut out, colorful it is, but the colors are quite muted and it does have a beautiful autumn look. I'm going to use my black liner and just take that black line that I've done on the teapot and bring it into the floral portion of the illustration. I don't want to get too heavy, so I'm just adding a few veining lines to some of the leaves. Uh, from there, I'll do my calendar and add a little color on that. And finally, the last step here is if you remember, I had two colors of gray for the teapot illustration when I started. So I'm gonna take the darker gray now and add just a little bit of shading. It's going to add depth and dimension and really make the illustration pop. And there it is, our cover page is all done. Teapot, autumn theme, Dutch door complete. What could be a more shade of cover page? I don't know. But now I wanna do my little um, goals and affirmations page underneath. So you can see I've blocked off where the Dutch door is so I don't put any illustrations past that line. And then I kinda wanna do a little teacup to match my teapot. So again, I start with a circle. Then I sketch a curving line to divide it in half and that really creates the teacup shape. Add a little base, a handle, you get the idea. I'm going to sketch a small tea bag there as well. We'll put the tea in it, a little um, tag on a string and even a staple and a heart on the tag. So all very fall. I'm going to write goals and then for my affirmations, I just write focus. We'll place a couple of those leaves that we used on the front cover up top and we Sort of have our goals and affirmations framed really nicely now without doing a lot. We're doing a lot without doing too much. Um, and then I'm going to use those same colors of blue, so bringing in a lot of colors from the cover page onto this, um, you know, kind of month at a glance page below, so we don't have to rethink everything. By doing the cover page, I've kind of set my color palette for the entire month. So that's a really nice thing about journaling, is you can kind of keep everything flowing through the whole month and you're not like reinventing the wheel every time you need to do a weekly layout or a calendar. Uh, so using some nice chocolatey browns here, keeping everything fall, but this page is a little less colorful and we're just working with a nice contrasting palette of blues and browns. So we've pulled a few colors from the cover page out, but not all of them. And I think that looks really pretty. 
I want to take a sec to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are so many classes to explore from watercolor to design, photography, art, and more. And it's all curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Whether you're a dabbler or a pro, a hobbyist or a master, you are creative. So discover what you can make with classes for every skill level. And right now, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore that creativity. Cool, let's take a look at what we have completed thus far. I think I am really enjoying this color. It's a lot for me. I do love black and white. Um, I find it difficult to make color look sophisticated and look simple. But with the muted palette and a small illustration, still lots of white space, lots of negative space, I think I'm making it work. Next, I'm going to create a September calendar. It's going to be a two page layout with lots of illustrations around it. And I'm gonna show you how to draw everything. So to begin, my calendar covers two pages with large margins and the grid is five by five, five by five dot grid squares. Um, so I'm just doing that really quickly. I am using an 03 nib black liner to do that, some brown up top for my days of the week. Um, I think this is the 04 nib that I'm using to get a nice weighty day of the week and then with that done let's talk about some illustrations so for fall I thought let's draw mushrooms together now mushrooms can basically just be any shape like a weird semicircle on top and then a long stem below I like to add spots on some of them so just draw some random spots and then all you have to do is fill it all in this could be red it could be brown and like I said a long stem below use a gray marker and just add a little shading that will make it look like it has a white stem. And I'll do another mushroom here. Seriously, any old shape on top with a stem, it's going to look like a mushroom. I'll add some leaves and grass to my mushroom illustration down here. Again, using warm, muted colors for fall instead of bright primary red, we're doing burgundy. Instead of bright green, we're doing like a dark evergreen. I'm going to add my lavender in, so carrying that from the cover page um, to some of my calendars and layers is going to give my journal a really cohesive feel. I'm doing some little flowers and leaves in purple here to make the whole illustration come together and it's always a good idea to add some shading. That's looking good. Let's draw a pear together as well. So for the pear, you just want to make the top of it uh, smaller than the bottom. It can be kind of uh, any shape and give it a little butt at its bottom there. Color it in with the, the dark yellow or mustard yellow. Add a leaf, a stem, a little bit of shading, some spotting, and there's your pear. What else can we draw for fall? I'm thinking peaches, apples, pumpkins, wheat, uh, lavender, um, tea, tea bags, teapots flowers, you know, what else would you like to draw? That's really what this calendar is all about. We left these large margins so we can draw just about anything that makes us think autumn. Up here, I wanna show you how I do a really simple floral bouquet. So you start with all these circles drawn in pencil, and that shows you where you're going to place all the little flowers. Once your cluster of circles is done, just go in and fill them in. Make sure some are smaller and some are larger. I tend to let my circles and world flowers get a little smaller towards the top of the page. I'm gonna do some brown dotting to represent the stamen at the center of each flower, and then all you have to do is fill in like join all the flowers together with these little green stems from there you add tons of tiny green leaves and the whole thing just comes together really easily and it looks so pretty you can add a little bit of shading if you want but that's it and don't you think that looks so cute it really fills in space nicely 
for this calendar with the illustrations in the margin, I encourage you to think about what fall means to you and think of an icon that represents those activities. I, I love knitting and I'm knitting crazy in the fall. I have knit Sullivan uh, pants, sweaters, hats, blankets. He actually has little knitted pants. They are so cute. His little butt is so cute. Maybe in the next plan with me video, um, he will show up wearing those knitted pants. <laughs> okay. I'll try to remember that. I am going to finish this with my September title up top. I added my sketchy black line to a lot of these illustrations and that's it. Now I will admit this calendar got away from me a little. I like the colorful illustrations, especially the simplicity and minimal nature of the cover page, but this one is a lot. There's a lot going on. There's not a lot of negative space. Uh, it's just a lot for me. It looks very cartoony and there's nothing minimal or simple about that calendar. So I'm going to try to redeem myself with the habit tracker and I'll show you how I'm going to kind of temper the big craziness of the illustrations on that calendar with this next spread. So I really loved my habit tracker from last month and I'm doing this similar one. Um, you start by, you know, coming up with your habits. I have six different habits that I want to track. So that means six calendars. I want to track things like, am I doing crafting? Did I do my workout? Did I go for a walk or a hike? Did Sullivan have have a good night where he only woke up once, etc. And then you just mark each day. That's literally all you do is highlight it if you did the item. Um, but here's what we're going to do to um, decorate this habit tracker. I've given myself a really tiny area and the illustration that I'm going to do has to fit in that square. So there's going to be a ton of negative space. It can't be helped. Most of the page is negative space, blank space. So I'm starting the illustration with two mushrooms right in the center, literally any shape on a stem, that's your mushroom. And it's framed with some little flowers and leaves. So couldn't be any simpler. I'll color in those mushrooms using my warm grays, the really light warm grays. Um, what I'll do is the light gray mushroom. I'll use the darker gray to add a little bit of shading. And then I have a third dark gray and that will add the shading on the darker mushroom. And then again, we're using warm muted colors like a muted green, a dark green, a burgundy, a mustard yellow. But what I really like about this illustration is it's really tiny and simple. So it's not really different than the other illustrations, but I've kept the feel that I like in my journal by utilizing lots and lots of blank space and just giving the illustration room to breathe. So I would really like to know, and this is the giveaway question. To enter the giveaway, you need to answer this question. What is your preference? Do you like the September calendar with its large, colorful illustrations, not a lot of space, or do you prefer the habit tracker? It's a little more minimal and there's lots of negative space there. There is more to entering the giveaway. Watch until the end of the video for all the details. Okay, there is the September habit tracker complete looks so pretty and this is the beginning of my September journal my second journal for the year 2021 we have our teapot autumn themed floral cover page so shada with our goals and affirmations below I always like that kind of tucked away we've got a very crazy very colorful September calendar and a simple habit tracker that I'm really going to enjoy because I loved having this habit tracker for the month of August. I did do a weekly layout for September. It's just not part of this video this month. To see it, head over to my Instagram at Shada Campbell. And patrons, remember, you can print my cover page for your own journal. That is available on Patreon as part of the bonus content. Supporting us on Patreon is easy and makes this channel possible. Head over there after today's video and check it out. Okay, let's talk giveaway, shall we? If you would like to enter to win a prize pack that includes an Archer and olive dot grid notebook, a set of six Pigma Micron fine liners, and of course my signature binder clips. All you have to do to enter is comment below answering the question that I asked earlier in this video and make sure you're subscribed to this channel and like this video and check the video description for further giveaway rules and info.
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Patrons, don't forget to go print your cover page. Make sure to enter the giveaway, everybody. And if you want to support us, support this family-run YouTube channel, all you have to do is subscribe. It makes a huge difference to us, to the business. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. As you know, I always like to highlight a Skillshare class that I think you would love if you do decide to use that offer and join up. And this one is a watercolor illustration class all about developing a wedding uh, suite. It's from Brooklyn artist or illustrator, Carolyn Wiedemann, and she's taking you through everything from uh, watercolors and how to use them, but also she gets into digitizing, working in Photoshop, um, talking a little bit about typography and printing and branding and all that sort of stuff so that you can really turn your passion for art into a little side business or potentially even more than a side business. Check it out because right now the first thousand of my subscribers to use the link in the video description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring that creativity.